We play a little game, Layla, of if you only knew. Oh, you make me nervous already. No, it's, you don't have to ask. <laughs> it's not a courtroom. <laughs> Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Probably uh, Morris Chestnut. Weirdest job you've ever had? Weirdest job? Weirdest? Did you have a weird or... We just, like, you wouldn't expect a yeah. McDonald's. My first job was at McDonald's. Yep, I went to visit my dad for the summer, and I was like, I want to work. I want to make my own money. I've always been independent, and I, I took a job at the neighborhood McDonald's. Where? What's it? Uh, Berrien Springs, Michigan. That's right, he lived in Michigan. Yeah, yep. Did he ever come to your McDonald's? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My dad used <laughs> to love McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, back then, you know, I'm sure once he was really trying to get on top of his Parkinson's, it was like, but it wasn't like that. He'd be sneaking to McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> guilty pleasure. Ooh, guilty pleasure? You eat only healthy foods. No, I mean, yeah, it's hard. No, I don't. I don't only eat healthy foods. Like, I, trust me, I will go get a good glazed donut and not Okay, and not that's feel, a guilty pleasure. Okay, fine, yeah. I would not feel anything about it either. I would, because, I mean, I eat good. I, I believe you should do 90% of the time. So, yeah. Glazed donuts are good. Um, A good one. There's this place by my house called Blinkies. Amazing. Yes. Where do you live in L.A.? I live in Calabasas. But, you know, in Woodland Hills, not too far from me. Blinkies. That's the best donut shop, yes. Who would you trade places with for a day? Hmm, probably, why not, I'll just say Oprah Winfrey. What film do you most wish you could have starred in? Superwoman. <laughs> Should have been me, I'm just something, joking, <laughs> I'm just playing. Something you wish you were better at? Um, I would say um, being more open to new friendships. Best piece of advice you ever got? Um, my father um, gave me some really good advice young, and it's stuck with me ever since, and I really truly live by it, is never to step on others to get ahead. And that can be applied to so many different areas of my life, and it's something that I'm teaching my kids now, because I think like we're living in a time where people feel like they have to say ne something negative about somebody or make somebody look bad, you know, just to make themselves feel better. And my father never wanted us to do that or never look down upon anyone, and he didn't. You know, like you said, he was the most famous man in the world, but he was still, you know, take, take the time and go out of his way to make the person who thinks you wouldn't pay him any attention to put a smile on their face, whether it be the janitor or someone like that. He so. was wonderful to me. Mm -hmm. I adored him. He hosted one of my book parties. That's great. But I'm trying to say, like, a lot of people are wonderful to you, but they might treat somebody else like you. Yeah, I know. You're so right. that he was not that guy, and I respect that. What never fails to make you laugh? <laughs> when people, when, when someone thinks they can beat me. <laughs> that never fails. Even that, retired, 10, ten years, from... it'll never, look, I don't care if I'm 65 in a wheelchair, I would still laugh if somebody, if a female thought she could beat me. It's your daddy's <laughs> jeans. Last time you were starstruck. I've never been starstruck, to be honest with you. Toughest opponent. In the boxing ring? Um, this girl named Kendra Linhart. She was, I'm physically a big girl. I'm tall, I've got big hands, I'm strong. And this girl was bigger than me and stronger than me physically. But um, luckily her skill level, boxing skills weren't up to par. So I ended up winning the fight, but it was a tough fight. Decision? It was a decision, yes. And one of my first fights, I've only, I mean, I have 21 knockouts out of 24 wins and she was one of those decisions. And some of the other ones were like, I wasn't feeling good, you know, I wasn't at my best, but I was at my best and still got a decision with her. Your father told me the only person who ever hurt him in the ring was Brian Cooper in London, mm -hmm. where he actually said he saw stars. Yeah, and I saw stars with this Kendra Linhart for the first time. You did. And it was an amazing thing. And that's how you know as a fighter, like afterwards, it was like, wow. Like, I saw a star. Like, that's what it feels like, because you don't know until it happens. Like, Went you down. actually, yeah, you actually, like, see these. And then time slows down, where everything feels like a slow motion while you're hurt, and you're trying to just hold on or do what you can do. But then if you watch the tape, it might only been a five-second period that felt like 30 seconds in the moment. It happened to your father once, he said. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I think he'd probably been hurt more than that. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your bucket list? Ooh. I would have to say, um, at some point, I want to just kind of travel the world. I'm not comfortable doing it right now um, because I have small children, and something in me just doesn't want to leave the country without them um, for a long period of time. So I think that when my kids are older and I don't feel like I have to be mama bear all the time, it'll give me a sense of relief, and I'll be able to kind of get out and see, see the world more. Best compliment you ever got? Um, I think when people compliment my character, um, that, that makes me feel best. Strangest fan encounter? 
Oh, gosh. There's so many. Um, people are interesting, like when you meet them on the street. <laughs> um, but I've had, um, I've had someone challenge me to a fight before, which was pretty interesting. But, of course, I laugh it off. You know, but you're just like, you're a little crazy there. The, a woman wanted to box you? It was a man, actually. That's what made it even more strange, you know? <laughs> What's something people get wrong about you or don't know about you? Um, oh, there's so many things they don't know. Probably I think that the, the I would think, and I know actually for fact, that a lot of people think that I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth, um, that life was easy, you know, and they don't realize that, um, you know, you go through a lot of the same challenges that a lot of other people do, especially like me. I was the rebel of the family. I got myself into a lot of trouble growing up. Um, I actually wrote a book, my first book, Reach, Finding Strength, Spirit, and Personal Power, was just about kind of why I became a fighter. A lot of people don't realize, like, I, I got in trouble. I went to juvenile hall and was there for three months. You're kidding. Three months, not just overnight, like, and had to, had to then from there go to a group home and graduate a program that took six months. What was, was this? This was when I was, like, 16. What city? Los Angeles. But the group home was in Monrovia, California, not too far from you. Did your father come see you? He didn't come see me. And it was okay because I didn't want him to come see me because that would have just been too much attention. Um, but of course I was in contact with him, but it's what I needed to go through because I was like spiraling out of control. But I've always been a fighter and people didn't know that when I started fighting and that's why I wrote about it. It's like you never can judge a book by its cover. Watch new episodes of Larry King Now Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on demand on Aura TV and Hulu.